So at this time, I'm going to ask Travis to come up and share with us what God has laid on his heart. Oh, no. Well, at least he gave me my security blanket. That's right. I've seen notes. Oh. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Travis Jones. Um, I'm married to Laura Jones. We've been married for 17 years yesterday. So. Yeah. And, uh, well, I've learned a lot of life lessons during that time. One of them was she gave her testimony last year. Um, it was about this time last year, I think. And God reached down and he said, your time's coming. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> he said, yeah, your time's coming. I said, no, it's not. And he said, yep, it's coming. And he just kept laying it on my heart, laying it on my heart. And I said, no, I'm not going to breakfast with Glenn. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and God said, I'll show you. And he gave Glenn a cell phone and taught him how to text. <laughs> and not only that, he sent a group text to me and Laura, and she threw me under the bus really quick. She's like, I did mine last year. It's Travis's turn. <laughs> All while I was driving down the interstate and couldn't answer. So here I am. Um, let's start in the beginning, I guess. Um, I would say that my walk with Christ probably started two generations before myself. Uh, when my grandfather married my grandmother and left the, the LDS church, or left the Mormon church. Um, at that point in time, our history is in the Joneses was changed. One half of my family, like all of my grandfather's brothers and sisters and everything like that, they're all LDS. And my grandfather's the only one in his family is the only side that's not LDS. So family gatherings are kind of interesting. Um, and then uh, I was taken to church, um, kind of like what Tim said a couple weeks ago. Went to church, but didn't necessarily like it. I didn't like being confined in the pews. They call it Sunday, your Sunday best for a reason because you have to dress, you know, you were taught you had to dress up. This is my dress up. I love this. <laughs> um, so I didn't really, I didn't really like it that much, but I continued to keep going. My parents took me, uh, you know, religiously they took me. Um, my family was Lutheran. And um, about the age of 10, my parents got a divorce and my mom went her way and my dad went his way, and uh, my grandparents stepped in and were that religious center, you know, focus point for me, and my brothers and stuff like that, and they stayed there, or we stayed the course with going to church on a pretty regular basis, I was confirmed in the Lutheran church in um, around ninth grade, I don't remember, how old are you when you're in ninth grade, guys? <laughs> anyway, 14, about 14, I was confirmed in the Lutheran church. Um, and uh, a couple years later, my uh, grandmother passed away, so that center point kind of left, and at that point in time, I kind of fell away from the church. I'm not going to get emotional. <laughs> I'm going to do this, but anyway, I, uh... <clears throat> Kind of started down the wrong path. Drugs, alcohol, um, almost died a couple different times. <laughs> um, one, I tried to take my own life. But God stepped in and uh, the gun misfired. Another time was, uh, I'm sure it was God's hand as well, I was um, actually up in church camp and we went on a mountain bike ride and one of the bikes broke down so being the biggest guy, I guess who got stuck with the backpack was carrying all of the camping gear. And uh, we went up, camped overnight, had a great time, got closer to the Lord. <coughs> On the way down, there was a steep hill, and I was coming down the hill, lost control of the bike. And the last thing I remember seeing was this big tree, the point of the tree sticking out. And I was headed right for it. And it hit me in the gut, but luckily it hit me where the belt is at. 
those of you that backpack a, a bunch, you know where the belt's at. It hit me in the belt and actually deflected it, and it broke about that much of the tree off in the belt. I remember setting up going, oh God, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> and I took the belt off and not a touch, nothing. So I know that you touched me there too. So anyway, I fell away and um, was headed down the wrong path, I know, it, and that's when he brought Laura into my life, because I wasn't looking for a steady girlfriend, I wasn't looking for anything, but he brought Laura into my life, and as she shared a year ago, you know, neither one of us really were looking for that relationship or anything like that, but I actually was invited out with some friends to go on a group date. Um, a bunch of her friends were tired of guys at the high school and they didn't want to go to prom with those guys so they just invited a bunch of their guy friends and I ended up going with one of my girlfriends or she was a really good friend of but we'd known each other since we were little and she was a good friend of Laura's so I ended up going with her and lo and behold all the rest of the guys canceled so there I was with eight girls <laughs> <laughs> a guy's dream right <laughs> Um, and we got to talking and it just started sharing things about our lives and what we wanted to do going forward and that connection started right there immediately. Um, the next day, being in an area that was so LDS heavy, one of my best friends was actually even on his mission. So I drove down to Salt Lake with a bunch of other friends and we went to see him off as he got on the plane. And when I got home, there was a, my mom said, one of your harem called. <laughs> I was like, who? You know, and I started listing off names. She's like, Lori, Leah. I was like, Laura? She goes, yeah, I think that's who it was. So I went home and I called. Or I went downstairs and I called her. She was gone. So I left a message. Later found out that her and her mom fought for 45 minutes before she called me back because her mom was my teacher in high school, so she knew who I was. <laughs> and she's like, you're not going to marry Travis, her, you're not going to date him. And we talked for three hours that first night on the phone. In fact, I think I fell asleep with the phone next to my head. And from then on, we were inseparable. We were there. So again, God intervened in my life. He gave me an earthly angel and uh, ever since we were married she kept saying you want to go to church Do you want to go to church because she's always had that faith i'm like mm, not today not today maybe next time maybe next time and i uh i would go on the, the required holidays christmas and easter you know because that's you're required to do that right <laughs> so i would uh, go on those that would kind of appease her a little bit i think um, and then uh, she knew, you know, everybody that knows me knows I'm really big into hunting and fishing and stuff like that. So she would ask me, she, you want to go to church? No, I'm going to go up in the mountains. That's God's church right there. I'm going to go up there and be with him. Well, I remember driving down the road after we moved up here to Montana. And I was listening to Caleb or somebody like that. And the, pre and the minister came on and he said, you know, if you're by yourself with God, you're probably by yourself. Mm -hmm. I was like, whoa. So, um, Laura had come to the church and she really liked it and she kept telling me about it and she said, I think you need to come. Oh, you know, so busy, I'm guiding all the time and when I have a Sunday off, I just want to lay back and rest and everything like that. And, She's like, okay, well, maybe in time. Well, then she took me to dinner with Tim and Mary Ann, and I met them, and I met Dom, and Dom started talking about the church and the congregation and the men's group and everything like that. And I was like, hmm, okay. And then a couple weeks later, we ended up going to dinner at Jeannie and Dennis's and had a great time with them. And uh, I woke up one Sunday, and I was like, you want to go to church? And Laura goes, what? I said, I'll go to church. She goes, well, I'm going to tell on you. Cause she's okay. like, um, I wasn't thinking about going, but since you want to go, let's go. <laughs> I said, all right. So that was my first time walking into here. And I just met all of you. And uh, you made me feel welcomed and didn't feel like I was being judged because I walked in in jeans and a t-shirt. And you stood up here and started talking. And I was like, holy cow, I actually really like this guy. <laughs> 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 
he's young, he's hip, he's not old, and where's Mike at? <laughs> so I'm going to tell Mike, old is, yes, definitely older than 50. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I found it was during the middle of my guidance season and stuff like that, so I got to come to a couple, there was a couple weeks I came and then I missed a few weeks, and then I came a couple weeks and then I missed a few weeks. And I found that while I was out there in the field, I actually missed coming to church. And I think uh, that morning that I woke up, that was God saying, you need to be with the congregation. You need to be worshiping in the place that everybody's coming together to worship me. You need to stop being on your own. So here I am. And uh, I love it. I love every one of you guys with all my heart. And uh, that's it. That's it.